here we are. I mean, it's been a minute since July has ended, yeah. but uh, we're finally getting around to it. We got a top five coming at you. That's the top five people as picked by Travis Holt for the month of July. Travis's top five, if you will, baby. Take it uh, over for Thomas Wolf because Thomas Wolf can't get out here. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, we'd like to have Thomas Wolf out yeah. here, but scheduling conflicts now. Uh, we're, 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 we're keeping the top five alive. We're, we're, we're YouTubers at heart, but in real life, uh, we have to have real jobs. We do. Uh, because we're not famous from YouTube yet. Uh, not we're yet. just like this much famous. We're getting close. Sure. Er, then we started. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but because of that, uh, you may have noticed over the last few weeks, we basically had to carry on alone. Uh, and by alone, I mean two of us. Yes. Which isn't really alone. Yeah. Unless you're a tag team. Then you're alone. Um, so, we, do we keep the same rules as Thomas's top five? Yes. Where no repeats from yep. the last time. No, is it no repeats from last month or no repeats it's, from the last no, time? No, it's no, no repeats from last month. Last month. So, so you can't do people I picked? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, which I didn't. Um, my, mine revolves around two particular... Two particular feuds, and then uh, one one person who it's just it's good to see them uh, getting the push uh, right off the bat. All right, so, well let's let's not dilly dally. Let's get to number five. All right, number five is that person that made their debut uh, is already getting the high profile match they deserve, especially from all the things they did for NXT. That being the num one of the number one contenders for the Universal Championship, Finn. Balor. Finn Balor. Uh, Finn Balor, I mean, you know, right off the bat, getting put in the Fatal 4-Way and the singles match with Roman beating, Reigns. Beating Rusev and beating Roman Reigns in his first night. I mean, it, uh, absolutely a fantastic way to debut. That's legitimately the best debut since AJ, no, since Paige debuted and beat AJ for the championship. Exactly, which was two years ago. Uh, and so, yeah, it's just, it's good to see that, you know, we've seen so many start and stops for NXT people, but Finn Balor is getting the recognition he deserves. Uh, I'm looking forward to the match between him and Seth at SummerSlam, because uh, I know that both of them are going to fucking kill it. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, I mean, Finn Balor, you know, having such a strong debut on, his, on the main roster really deserves to put him in a spot here. Um, let's move on to number four. Uh, number four is a guy who, you know, we can't say enough good things about. Uh, and most notably, uh, he held his own with a Lucha legend at Ultima Lucha Night 3, that being Prince Puma, a.k.a. Yeah. Ricochet. Uh, in the match, uh, the Prince versus El Rey, uh, it was him trying to see if he was the next Rey Mysterio um, and he proved without a shadow of a doubt how good he is in the ring. Uh, it doesn't matter who you put him against, he seems to have the same level of energy, uh, it, you know, the same, uh, the same just heart and passion that he puts in every single match. You know, you go back, I, you know, I had him, uh, you know, we talked about him, uh, when I did my first top five, when I had Will Ospreay on there, him and Will Ospreay. You know, setting the internet on fire, and now... You well, know, Osprey, who says he's going to embarrass a Vader. I hope so. Uh, it's just, he is a fantastic athlete. He gets a lot of good praise. He gets a lot of, he gets a lot of shit that he doesn't necessarily deserve from people like Vader. Uh, but, you know, ev not everyone can embrace the new school like, uh, like Stone Cold can. If you haven't checked out uh, Ricochet on uh, the Steve Austin show, you should. Um, we endorse podcasts here at the Wrestling Run. We do. Art of Wrestling, Talk with Jericho, and the like. Exactly. Um, so, keeping with the Prince Puma Ricochet, number three is his opponent, that being Rey Mysterio. Uh, Rey Mysterio did more in this match than we've seen him do in a very long time. Yeah. It was his last year as a WWE employee. It was nice to see... Uh, classic Rey Mysterio come out. It's good to see Rey Mysterio Jr. Yeah, Rey Mysterio Jr., uh, you know, he 
he reinvigorated that that thought that when you think of Rey Mysterio, you should think high flying, fast pace. You should think risk taking. You should think lucha libre. You should think lucha libre. You shouldn't think muscled up WWE just trying to hold on to the Rey Mysterio name. You you shouldn't have to go. Oh, all right, it's a Rey Mysterio match. You you should be like. Holy shit, it's a Rey Mysterio match. And when he's in there with such a great athlete like Ricochet, it's nice to see that... You mean Prince Puma? That one, too. Uh, It's nice to see that their chemistry is just natural. And they play off of each other so well. It was just... it It was a moment that Rey Mysterio, I'm sure, has needed television wise for the better part of the last five years. Probably. Uh, if not longer than that. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm very interested to see what he's going to be doing uh, in Season 3, uh, how, how involved he's going to be, and what other types of matches he's going to have, just because he proved that he's still as good as he ever was in this match with he, Prince Puma. He might not be as good as he once was, but he could be as good once as he ever was. Thank you. What's the guy's name? It's country star. Super Toby Keith. Yeah, I was gonna say Super That's the Terry. one. I was going to get there eventually. Uh, now moving on to number two. Uh, once again, going to another feud uh, that uh, is still heading into SummerSlam, but culminated in a big way at the end of July. I'm talking about the former WWE Women's Champion, Charlotte. Uh... Fantastic spot in the tag team match at Battleground. Uh, her and Dana Brooke really holding up the heel side, yeah. and then following it up with the tag or with the championship match they had on Monday Night Raw. Charlotte has been a great women's champion. She is ha- you know having her moment at WrestleMania, uh, having ju- you know not I mean the stuff with Rick was a little. Here and there, you know, a little wonky, but I feel like now she's getting a chance to be herself. She's, you know, after she broke away from Rick, she's getting a chance to be uh, the wrestler that she wants to be. And having matches with Sasha, you know, after, after the matches they had in NXT, we know that they can go. And the fact... Not, not only the fact that we knew this match was going to be good, but the fact that we got a championship change on Monday Night Raw is a big... It's something we haven't seen on Raw in two years. <laughs> that, was, that was one of the best women's matches that's happened in a long time. Yeah. And, it, you know, it, you, it, it, we even kind of had, you know, that moment when Sasha ended up doing the Scorpion. It, you know, it, it reminded us of uh, that, that main event match between Trish and Lita back in uh, 2005 or something like that. It's just great women's wrestling, uh, people invested in, in characters, and people wouldn't be invested in this if they didn't want to see Charlotte lose. And Charlotte has done a great job of making herself unlikable as a character but still respected as a wrestler yeah so which is why she deserves to be on this top five you can kind of see where i'm going here number one not only is it because i'm absolutely in love with this woman not only is it because she is a fantastic wrestler not only is it because she's the boss but she is now the wwe women's champion i'm talking about sasha banks yeah because she really got screwed with the original come up of her Charlotte and and Becky like she didn't really get the push that she deserved right off the bat and then you know not to be fair none of them really did because I feel like Charlotte did when when the initial like come up happened it did get a little marred down by the fact that they all had to be in three-person teams. Right. Uh, but Charlotte did, like, really pull ahead of the group. 
Yeah. Because WWE saw the potential in her and made her win the women's championship. Yeah. And so I think in a way that really helps how how And then the, Sasha got injured. Yeah. Exactly. It's the the despite the fact that she got a really rough initial start, I feel like this whole journey has made people want to see Sasha get to this point even more. And the fact that she is consistent on her promos, in her matches, uh, you know, she's she is just she captivates people and she believes the character that she's playing. And to see her get that win on a Monday Night Raw, you know, in front of just the crowd was just insane. It was it was such a it was such a good crowd. It was such a good moment. And it really, it was one of the things that made me kind of say, okay, the brand split's okay because Raw's going to be doing stuff like this. Granted, they didn't follow up the next two weeks, but with Sasha, they did. Like, Sasha's stuff has has continuously been entertaining, and now we get to look forward to what Sasha and Charlotte are going to do at SummerSlam a year after they made their their main roster debuts. So... That's it for my top five for July. Uh, I would like to give a considerable honorable mention oh. to Rusev. Ah, uh, yes. For being a great United States champion and a hero to Americans everywhere. In Moscow, we trust. Yes. Now that's it for the top five. Thank you for the honorable mention, Kevin Hawk. Uh, what did you think about the top five? Who would you have put in? Is there someone that you don't think deserves to be in it? Because you can't change it anyway. But I'd like to know your thoughts on who you think should have been in the top five. Who is your top five for the month of July? Uh, let us know down in the comments. Uh, be sure to like, favorite, or no, you don't favorite, you comment, you subscribe. Yeah, that's my line. That's how you put me I know. Don't forget to like and favorite, comment. Damn it, you, <laughs> made, you made me do that. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Click all the links down in the description. Uh, you're only going to get this video as a video. You don't get it as a podcast. But if nope. you want to check out our reviews, you check out the podcast link down in the description. But if you're keeping with the videos, check out the playlist. This is going to be the last one, obviously. If you're watching it, you can see the playlist now. Go back, check out our reviews. Check out uh, our uh, first first two matches of the second round of the Cruiserweight Classic. Uh, should be some good ones. You should go check out our review. Yeah, NXT. Um, in the midweek wrap up. Exactly. Uh, NXT setting up for Brooklyn 2. SmackDown, which was way better than Raw this Monday. Yeah, don't bother with Raw. Feel free to skip Raw if you want to. If you haven't I mean, if you got it, eight and a half minutes to kill, you can watch us just totally rip Raw apart. Or not. Well, no, we didn't even really rip it apart. We just we didn't ignored give a shit. it. For the most um, you can go back and you can see just how little of a shit we gave. But. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you at whatever video you decide to watch next. Yeah. That.